Hi guys, so in this episode I'm going to talk about weak dominance and also I'm going to talk about some uh, variations of our previous definitions like best response and strict dominance and, and sort of discuss why they're not equal or why we define those notions as the way we define. Okay, so let's start with weak domination. So remember our definition for uh, dominance is, is a strict terms. So the payoff has to be strictly higher than another payoff. But what if the domination is not strict? An example, so let's consider this simple game where, you know, player one has two strategies, A, B, player two has two strategies left, right. So the payoffs are three, zero, three, five, and then uh, five, seven, and then uh, three uh, minus one, okay? So here, what I can say is the following. For the first player, um, playing B is, you know, sometimes better, sometimes the same as playing A. So I can't really say utility of B is greater than utility of A, for every, you know, sigma 2 I have, or S2 I have, okay? Uh, but it is sometimes greater, sometimes equal. So can I use this concept as the idea of dominance? Um, well, of course we can, and this is uh, basically uh, what motivates this definition. Uh, but later we'll see we do not use this as sort of a solution concept, uh, partly because it's not a re really a reliable uh, approach to uh, sort of solve games. But I mean, let's leave that side uh, the part aside. Uh, let's formally define what we mean by weak domination. So a mixed strategy, sigma i, that belongs to player i, weakly dominates another strategy, pure strategy of player i, if the payoff of playing sigma i is greater than or equal to payoff of playing s i for every s sub minus i, uh, meaning uh, whatever my opponents are doing, playing s sigma i should be giving me greater than or equal to payoff of uh, playing s i. Right? So sometimes I may achieve the same payoffs, but sometimes strictly higher. So as long as this inequality is satisfied, I say that sigma i strictly dominates s i. Okay, as simple as this. Um, and exactly, in this case, for instance, B, I mean, I'm sorry, A is not strictly dominated. So this is why I sometimes call dominated instead of, uh, strictly dominated instead of dominated. So you see what I mean? So A, for example, here is not strictly dominated, but it is weakly dominated, okay? All right, um, so now let's argue why we define the concepts the way we define. Uh, I mean, there are you know, a bunch of different ways uh, or, or sort of um, questions we may ask, but one of them is the following. So if you remember the definition of uh, domination, <clears throat> we said a, a mixed strategy, uh, I'm sorry, we said let me give the original definition. The strategy SI is dominated if there exists some sigma i um, such that, so sigma i corresponds to maybe pure, maybe mixed strategy, such that ui sigma i s minus i greater than or equal to ui um, si s minus i uh, for all s minus i in s minus i, all right? So if you remember that, the, so it's sort of the same thing, right? We don't have, uh, I'm sorry, it's exactly the same thing. Um, so the, the, the domination was strict. So it's exactly the same thing. The only difference is here I have greater than or equal to sign. Here I have strictly greater than sign. But here, uh, you know, one thing is that we, when we make this comparison, we compare the payoffs and the, the, the parameter that we vary is the uh, other player's uh, uh, strategy profile, but pure strategy profile, pure strategy profile of other players. What does that mean? I mean, 
Can't we make this definition as follows? Alternative. Um, SI is dominated if there exists sigma i such that um, ui sigma i sigma minus i greater than ui uh, si sigma minus i for all uh, sigma minus i element of uh, this triangle. Remember this triangle means the, 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 the mixed strategy profiles of S minus I. So can, can't I define the domination in this fashion? Um, here, the notational difference, uh, you know, instead of using S minus I, I'm using sigma minus I. So what does that mean? That means here, uh, the payoff player I's payoff is, is, is always better. But, you know, when I say always, I am looking only at the pure strategy profiles of the other players. However, here, what I'm doing is I'm making this comparison for every, um, uh, for every uh, strategy of the other player. Um, so are, are they different? Yes, they are different. How so? Um, well... Remember the, uh, the way I draw uh, the previous game. So I had like four by two game in the previous episode. So I said, let's player two plays action X, strategy X with probability P and Y with probability one minus P. So I had the expected utility of playing A, expected utility of playing B, etc. If you remember, so let's suppose expected utility of playing A is this. This is when P is zero and this is when P is equal to one, all right? And then expected utility of playing B is something like this, okay? So this is expected utility of B uh, given sigma two, and this is expected uh, utility of playing uh, uh, A given sigma two. All right, so what happens is <clears throat> when P is zero and when P is one, these are basically corresponding to two pure strategies of the second player, all right? Meaning uh, when I compare these two payoffs of the player one, all right, um, under the assumption that the second player is, is, is playing a pure strategy, well, we have that player one's strategy under B is higher than player one's strategy under A. So therefore, according to this definition, uh, so let's call this definition one and let's call this definition two. So according to, to definition one, uh, A is, strictly dominated, all right? However, according to definition two, according to uh, definition two, A is not strictly dominated, okay? Uh, why is that so? Well, because there are some p-values, for example, in this range, where A is giving higher utility than B and strictly. And sometimes they give, you know, both A and B give exactly the same payoff. So the thing is though, uh, in definition one, I do not really care about what happens of the payoff of A and payoff of B when P is in between zero one, but strictly less than one and strictly higher than one. However, according to definition two, I do care about what happens to the payoff of playing A and B when P takes any value between zero and one, all right? So therefore, these two definitions may actually lead to two different conclusions. Uh, you see what I mean? So, so that means these are not two, I mean, this, this is not always the case, but depending on the game, depending on the payoff structure, it may be the case, all right? So therefore, this is not really an alternative definition because they are not equivalent um, and uh, not equivalent in every game. And so, uh, you know, those type of simple 
um, how should I say, twists in the definitions may actually lead to completely different conclusions. So therefore, it really is very important how we, uh, you know, sort of set uh, out those definitions. So our definitions of domination is this one, not the second one. Um, but obviously these are a matter of taste, right? I mean, some people may define it in this fashion, some people may want to define it in this fashion. Uh, so which one do you like? Uh, well, that's, that's totally up to you. All right, uh, so similar kind of uh, uh, comparisons we can do in other definitions. So the notations are very, very critical. So uh, don't, don't forget that. Uh, one more thing is, well, fine, this second definition is not uh, the definition we are worried about, fine, but let's focus on the first definition. And according to this definition, all right, we say that um, A is strictly dominated, and therefore, if we calculate B1, meaning the set of, I'm sorry, uh, the undominated set of strategies for player one, well, it's only A, right? B is not include, I'm sorry, it's only B according to definition one, because A is strictly dominated, and so only B is uh, not dominated. However, if you, if you calculate the best response of player one, the, the set of best response strategies, uh, well, here, remember, there are some p-values where A is giving higher payoff, and you know some p-values where B is giving higher payoff, so it seems like both A and B are uh, our, our best response. So is this kind of an example where uh, UD1 is different, uh, I'm sorry, equal to B1. So, so did, did they're not equal, clearly, but this is, remember, did, did, did this uh, example motivated by two-person game, a finite two-person game, um, but then we reach that, you know, they, they're not equal. So is this a contradiction? So what's, what's really going on here? Well, here is the reason um, in that this is why the proof of this argument, you know, uh, the, the set of undominated strategies for each player is equal to the set of uh, best response strategies. Uh, the, the, the argument of this proof is more involved, more complicated than you probably think. And the reason is uh, we will never have this sort of payoff structure in a finite game uh, where there are two players. Uh, well, why is that so? Well, just look at, again, this is not a generic proof, but if this is a two player game, and if the second player for simplicity has two actions, all right, so uh, therefore the, the, the beliefs are, are gonna be like P uh, versus one minus P. So therefore, expected payoff of playing any action, A, B, C, D, E, whatever, all these actions payoffs are going to be a, a lines, a straight lines, straight lines, um, right? Because, I mean, it's meaning the expected payoff of playing B can never be a sort of a, this, this kind of a weird function where it decreases first and then increases because this is more like a quadratic function. And there's no way the expected payoff of player one is gonna be a quadratic function of P because P enters to the expected utility linearly. Right. However, this functional form is more like p squared plus something something. All right. So that means the example I picked here can never occur in a finite action game uh, and when there are two players. And so therefore, uh, you know, this conclusion will never really occur in that environment. Uh, it's just an example that I gave you. It's a made up example where I gave you that two definitions may not really uh, mean the same thing in every game, so meaning there are, there might be some games where two definitions may actually be different. Well, logically speaking, uh, somebody may ask, therefore, in a two-player finite games, can I say that these two definitions are identical? Hmm, very good. In fact, you can. Uh, but let's not sort of, uh, you know, talk about all these detailed arguments. 
Uh, all I wanted to underline in this episode is that, you know, the definitions or the details in the definitions are sometimes very or maybe very, very important. So be careful about these uh, sort of uh, maybe uh, small looking uh, sort of points. Okay.